the modern age of touchscreen devices is a beautiful thing. Not only has it meant bigger screens, but it's also meant more interesting ways for us to interact with our devices. Having said that, under certain circumstances and for certain tasks, you just can't beat a proper physical QWERTY keyboard. Enter the Unihertz Titan Pocket, the smaller, lighter, and more portable cousin of the regular Unihertz Titan phone. But does this smaller size equal a worse user experience? I'm William Worrell from MakeUseOf.com, and today we'll be taking a look at the Unihertz Titan Pocket phone. If you're not familiar with Unihertz, they're a company that have been steadily releasing phones via Kickstarter since 2017, starting with the Jelly, billing itself as the world's smallest 4G phone. Since then, they have successfully launched five phones via the service, including the Tiny Jelly, the rugged but still powerful Atom, and the full QWERTY stylings of the Titan. The company's latest offering is the Titan Pocket, a lighter weight version of the original Titan phone that retains the full QWERTY keyboard and rugged design while packaging it into a phone that is 31% smaller than the original Titan model. As well as featuring a tactile keyboard, the Titan Pocket features a 3.1 inch 716x720 display, a biometric fingerprint scanner, a 4000 milliamp hour battery, and the same drop resistant design as its predecessor, although it should be noted that the Pocket version is not waterproof, so don't try to take it swimming anytime soon. It's also running the latest version of Android 11, and will cost you around 220 to 250 US dollars if you go for the early bird price on the Kickstarter page. If you wait for the full retail price, you can probably expect about $350, judging by the promised discount of 33% for the Kickstarter version. Obviously, the most significant and noticeable feature of the phone is the keyboard itself. If you find yourself doing a lot of typing, whether that be emailing colleagues or taking notes, you'll have a much easier time on this tactile keyboard than you would on a modern touchscreen keyboard. The keyboard is nice and responsive, and depending on the size of your hands, you should have a pretty easy time typing on it. Regardless of your hand size, typing on the pocket does take some getting used to, particularly if you find yourself using a lot of punctuation or numbers. Typing letters is pretty easy, thanks to the way that the keyboard has been moulded. But to use symbols or numbers, you have to press the ALT key before typing anything. You can also double tap it to type a string of numbers and symbols, but typing in anything like an alphanumeric code on the phone is a complete nightmare. You may also find yourself accidentally pressing the wrong buttons when you first start using the phone. While the letters are technically in a QWERTY configuration, the backspace and enter key are a little lower than you may be used to. Nevertheless, once you've been typing for a while, you should find that your speed on the device compared with a modern touchscreen is much higher. The keyboard is a great feature, but that does necessitate the loss of some screen real estate, and that has affected some aspects of the Titan Pocket's usability. It's been taken from 169 to a much squarer aspect ratio. In fact, the 716 by 720 ratio is so close to 1 to 1 that it's basically indistinguishable. This means that things like reading emails, writing down notes, or chatting over Slack or Discord are easy and fit into the screen well. However, if you plan on using your phone for entertainment purposes, things get a little more uncomfortable. Apps like YouTube or Netflix are pretty hard to watch for various reasons. The main one being that the 16.9 video is squashed onto the tiny screen. Even if you did think that you'd be able to enjoy your favourite Netflix series, the rounded design of the base makes it nearly impossible to find a stand that will hold the thing, meaning you've either got to hold it the entire time, or find a way of precariously propping it up making it much more likely to fall and hit the floor. On the plus side, thanks to the rugged design, it's unlikely to actually do any damage. These problems with aspect ratio have carried over to other apps as well. In lots of cases, parts of the screen are either cut off or the whole thing is squashed down, which means that looking at the screen could potentially give you eye strain over extended periods. This is the case for both social media applications like Instagram, as well as games like Pokemon Go or Magic the Gathering Arena. To be clear, in most cases applications will still work, but in various cases you might find yourself unable to perform certain actions. You can also use something called mini mode that forces the screen to show everything, but that still means you'll have a hard time seeing small details. It's not all bad news on an entertainment front though, there are some areas where the Titan Pocket really shines. On the back of the screen is quite a powerful speaker 
So if you like to listen to podcasts or music while you're working and need to be able to hear the sound over a mechanical keyboard, for instance, you shouldn't have any trouble. If you're a fan of older games, the keyboard can actually make certain experiences much more enjoyable. For instance, playing original Game Boy titles works great, partially thanks to the games being much chunkier and easier to see, as well as the tactile keyboard making it much easier to play them than an emulated controller on a touchscreen. The Titan Pocket features an 8 megapixel front camera and a 16 megapixel rear camera, and while the quality of these cameras is not going to blow you away, they are more than adequate for documenting things or taking video notes for yourself. This is the kind of quality you can expect from the front camera, although I should point out that this is not what the microphone sounds like. This is what the built-in microphone sounds like in an outdoor setting. And this is what it were to sound like if I were to use the built-in microphone in an indoor setting. This is some footage from the rear camera. As you can see, it's passable at 1080p with natural lighting. Although I should point out that this has been roughly upscaled to 4K to match the rest of this video. And there are a few other key features that this phone has which are worth noting. The Kickstarter page doesn't make any mention of either the chipset being used or any strength rating for the screen. From personal experience, the screen has survived several drops without taking any damage so far. What the page can tell you is that the Titan Pocket features 6GB of DDR4 RAM and 128GB of ROM. You can also expand the storage with a micro SD card. Or, if you'd prefer, you can elect them out to two SIM cards at the same time instead. As well as the standard power and volume controls, you have a big red button on the side of the pocket that gives you quick access to various functions. A double tap will take a screenshot, and holding it down toggles the flashlight, which can be incredibly useful if you're suddenly plunged into darkness and don't want to fumble with the menu of your phone to get a light. The keyboard function can be programmed with different shortcuts that you can access from the home menu, or from any app by holding the FN key while performing the shortcut. These can be mapped to any application, as well as a variety of different phone functions, including in-app functions, such as adding events to your calendar or starting a new email. Speaking of the keyboard, there's also a function that allows you to scroll using the keyboard itself, and this can really help to alleviate some of the issues caused by the smaller screen. It makes, for instance, scrolling through your social feed or reading the news much more enjoyable. There's also a few distinct functions that make it clear the Titan Pocket is designed around utility more than entertainment. As well as the stock Android 11 applications like a calculator and camera, you also get a toolbox application that features various useful tools, including a protractor, a sound sensor, and even a heart rate monitor. Thanks to an IR sensor on the top, you can even use the phone as a remote control for your TV, which comes in incredibly useful if you ever can't find your regular remote. You can also expect the 4000mAh battery to last you at least a full day if you're using power intensive apps such as Netflix or games. If you use your phone more sporadically or turn off features such as Bluetooth and location services, you should expect to get at least a couple of days before needing to recharge the device. Overall, the Titan Pocket is a great phone under the right circumstances. If you're looking for a phone that will help you get work done and provide you with a superb typing experience, then you may have found your perfect phone. However, if you can't live without video streaming or game applications, then this phone is likely not right for you. If you are the kind of person the phone is designed for, then you will find a well-designed and well-built phone that could take a lot of punishment and will furnish you with plenty of features to make your life much more convenient. A big thank you to Unihertz for sending us the Titan Pocket 4 review, and a big thank you to you as well for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave us a like, and comment down below if you think that the Titan Pocket could replace your phone for daily use, or if you have any questions about the device. If you want to see more content from us, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell icon. If you want to read the written version of this video, you'll find it on our website at makeuseof.com. Have a great day.